Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Ben, and today we are in our little crafty workshop, and we are looking at pyrography. Okay, so this is my kind of first love, how I kind of got into woodwork. Um, and it's a cracking little hobby. Um, really nice just to kind of relax and, and, and take some quiet time. Um, today we're looking at um, fur and feathers and how we kind of, kind of texture those things. Um, lots of people do birds and animals. Um, I do so myself. Um, and so, you know, why not have a look at, at kind of some of the techniques I use? And, you know, and I'll stress this is the way that I like to do it. There's lots of different ways, lots of different tools and things like that that you could use. Um, but I want to show you the way that I kind of build up the textures and, um, and you know, start drawing out these, these little animals and bugs and uh, birds and things like that. So I'm going to show you some of the techniques um, that I use. First job, um, well, I, I'm kind of partway through a couple of projects because it should be, uh, you know, I should say as well that this does take time. Um, there's no kind of quick um, and easy way of doing it. There's a couple of shortcuts that we can look at, um, but I've never found them quite, um, you know, they don't give you the same kind of um, textures and stuff. Um, but I will show you those. Um, and so this is going to be largely project based. Um, and I've got a couple of examples and through those two examples, um, I'll show you, you know, a, a little range of techniques. Okay. So if we come in, um, I'll show you this little bat, the project that I'm working on. This is um, a, a fruit bat. Okay. So that's the one. Thank you. Um, so we've, we've done a lot of the work already and I'm working from, uh, from a template. So I have, kind of copied this using uh, a carbon paper to get the design onto the um, onto the piece of timber. And I'm using that as my reference um, because when we're talking about fur and things like that, it's really important we get all the right um, flow and direction of things. Um, so yeah, let's get, get going. So if we can come in nice and close on our, um, on our camera three there, that's it, lovely, thanks Colwyn. And again, I should mention Colwyn's on our cameras today. He's looking after you on the questions. Um, so any questions you've got as we go along, uh, just fire them into the chat there and we'll do our best to, to answer. Okay, so um, you can see I've done a fair bit of work on this already. Um, I just wanna start to, to bring in um, the, the kind of texture of the fur um, a bit further back and we'll get the detail in on, on the legs here. So when we're looking at fur, um, we don't want to um, start drawing in really hard lines. If I just bring this back to a point where it's focused on the head there, um, we're trying to avoid um, any kind of outlining of, um, of the animal, okay? We get this broken line, it looks a lot more natural. Um, once we start to draw in that line, um, you know, you start, you can, you can burn over the top, um, but it, it, you can still see it in there. So my first tip would be don't go around the, um, the project and burn that line in as a hard line because um, it, it will just look a little bit um, less realistic. So on the, um, on the body here, coming towards the back of this, um, this bat, and it could be anything. I've just chosen this one because I really like the image. Um, what we're going to do is just do some little, little lines. And I'm using my sharp tip on the, um, on the pyrography pen. Let me get that where you can see it. Um, my sharp tip, and this is the one I do all, pretty much all my work with. And I'm just doing some little lines. And they're kind of curving in each one. Each strand starts at a different place. You don't want to um, kind of start each of these little um, kind of fluffy shapes um, in the same place because then you're going to start to get um, a, a burn that builds up and it gives you a really kind of dark area. So we want to avoid that a little. So each one of these little hairs is starting in a 
in a new place at a different height on the project. And I'm trying to kind of curl them in so they're like little sections, I guess. Um, being a little bit random with the direction of the hairs, um, you know, these are a bit scruffy. He's not had a, a brush or anything. And don't worry if we start to get little kind of darker patches. We can come back to that in a minute. And we can, um, we can start to add highlights and things like that. So for now, we're just building up this texture, really. I've got my heat on the Antex FireWriter. That is just below seven at the moment, so it's fairly hot. Um, and again, normally I would I would work a bit slower than this, take my time, but it is a little bit boring to watch. So I've ramped up the heat a little, and we're just going to kind of fill in this texture before we can start to use some different techniques. So we've got our first question. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, Maria wants to know what the wood is. So this is a piece of lime or, or um, basswood if you're in the States. Um, so a lovely, um, lovely material to burn on. Um, we've got a little bark edge at the top here. I quite like to keep those kind of natural features in. So yeah, this is a, this is a bit of lime, Maria. Really, really nice to burn on. Um, and it holds detail very well, just like, um, you know, lots of carvers use it because um, it just uses it, it holds that sharp detail okay yeah lovely maria did think it was lime so fantastic um and then philip larney hello um from harper woods what is the wattage of the burner the wattage let me see it should have a little kind of legend plate on here somewhere let's have a quick peek um so it's 44 watts max so this is variable um, but it goes up to 44 when you're, um, you know, when you um, pop that little dial on the front. If I show you, if we go on camera four there, Kevin. lovely. So on the front here, we've got a little um, variable um, dial um, and that brings the temperature up and down. Um, I'm working just below seven. I'm not sure you can see that on the dial, um, but that's where I'm. I'm kind of started. And like I said before, I'd already got going on this project. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of knew roughly the temperature I was working at. I just ramped it up a bit for this demo. Okay, so another question. Yeah, uh, Frederick's just asking, can you tell him what the what makes a good tip and what to look out for when buying and also a power supply? So I guess the, the burning unit. Um, so... Sorry, uh, the tip as in the, what tip we've got fitted or um, the, the machine itself? Makes, um, could you tell me what makes a good tip and what to look out for when buying and also power supplies? So, yeah. So, um, so this is um, this is just a normal kind of um, was it thirteen volt just plugged straight into the into the um, into your plug socket. Um, you don't need anything special. Um, the tips that I'm using are, um, are I, I make them myself actually, but if you're looking to, to buy a tip like this, it would be classed as a skew tip or sometimes a spear tip. Um, they're really good, they're really versatile um, and you can use them flat on their side, which we'll show you in a minute, or up on edge to create that real sharp, um, you know, clean line. Okay, I think this is where lots of people um, stumble um, when they first start pyrography is they get those blobs um, and that's from using that writing tip and a little bit too much pressure. With these sharp tips, they cut right through all the grain um, and give you that real nice definition. So I'd definitely go for something sharp. And if, you, um, if you've got your writing tips, you can hammer them out flat and, and sharpen them on a bit of abrasive. Um, so I definitely recommend uh, recommend making your own um, and if you're interested in in that um, we have got some here we can have a look at um, we could we could make a tip um, I have done that on other videos if you kind of check back through the archive um, might be worth um, looking at that uh, for some hints and tips on 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 tip making so 
we got his little legs at the back here. Um, I've drawn in a quite hard line, but I'm just going to break that up slightly by using that straight edge on the tip and making lots of little kind of lines to make up that one line. So it's not so hard and ingrained. We're just breaking it up a little bit and giving it a slight kind of jagged edge. And that's kind of suggesting the fur, I guess. These toes have got quite strange feet on this bow. I guess that's from hanging upside down in the trees. Um, but that's the way they are in the illustration that I've taken this from. And this illustration is from um, a Tom Chalky thing. It's, it's a, um, a font pack that I got, and it came with a load of retro diagrams as well, and they're really cool foxes and stuff. Um, so that's where the images come from. This isn't one I've pulled off the internet. So just carrying on with this little texture a little bit, I'm just going to speed it up and again crank up the heat. And um, let's get this um, fur on here. And you can see I'm doing little random strokes, slightly twisting the pen each time I bring that down. And that's going to give us a different direction for each of these hairs. And they should start overlapping and give us a really nice little, little texture. So doing fairly long strokes on the body here. You know, if you've got a short head, perhaps you're doing like um, a short haired dog or something with short hair like a horse. You know, sometimes these sort of textures aren't gonna work on that. You'd have to do smaller strokes and really build those up. And that's what I'm doing just down on the feet here is some, some slightly shorter strokes so we've still got a texture there but it's not looking like he's got long hairs on his feet so we've got another question come in yeah this one again Philip Blani wants to know is that is it nichrochrome um, wire and what gauge is it that's right um so it's a, a, a some people call it a nickel chrome um, nichrome um, but it's yeah it's a mix between nickel and chrome it's a resistance wire um, you see it a lot in like things like toasters um, and what it is is because of that um, I think the chrome content it can get really hot and and cool down again but without it tempering the metal so it's not changing the kind of um, the physical attributes of, of the metal um, so nichrome wire and this I believe let me have a little look I've got my reel here um, 21 SWG okay it's not quite in focus there so 21 SWG um, standard wire gauge um, but it's 0.8 millimeters Okay, sometimes they sell it in weight, they sell it in thickness, in the SWG, um, also in millimeters. So sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to kind of navigate your way around and find what's what. Um, but 21, um, and that gives me a bit of strength. A lot of people go um, a lot thinner with these wires, um, but I find the, the tips, um, they're not quite as strong for what I want to do with them. Um, but they have got their place, those, those um, smaller wires. Okay, so we've done that, um, that fur there. Um, we've got another question come in. Uh, yeah, do you mind? It's a Not turning question. I yeah, just, no, go so for it. I'll right. carry on. Just because it's, it's one of those really, really good questions and very apt for the moment. Um, this is from Martin. He's, he's got a lot of uh, Christmas tree trunks that have piled up over the past couple okay. of weeks. Um, wants to know what, how to deal with them. Uh, are they good to store? Um, should he keep them for six to eight months um, after sealing them, ready to turn? Um, what do you say here, Martin, that you want to turn them into Christmas trees for next year? You got. A, I personally would 
do them now while they're wet, um, if they are still wet, because they'll curl over much better if you're doing curled Christmas trees, like hill cut trees. If you're just turning them into um, regular shapes, Christmas trees, those skew cuts, that sort of thing, then yeah, you can dry them. If you go much over sort of three inches or even less, sometimes they will split even though you seal them. So um, you win some, you lose some. But yeah, it's really up to you. Hill cuts I would do now or like you say, just dry them in long lengths um, for next year to turn. So you've got loads of options. Lovely. Thanks, Cohen. Again, really lovely to have this, um, you know, knowledge on tap. I've been benefiting it from it for years now with these guys. It's always, you know, there's always one of them's going to have the, the correct answer. So I'm just um, darkening up this coat. Um, so we've been over, we've done the texture, we've kind of cut in the texture so it gives it that kind of hairy look, okay? And I'm following the, um, the, the shape of the body. So all the hairs here have come along parallel, well, almost parallel to the body a bit. You know, we want to make it a little bit hickledy-pickledy. But if we come um, onto this little shoulder area, we, some of these um, kind of hairs are, are kind of flicking up in different directions. And the direction of the body, you know, is really important. Where we've got this, I guess it's a shoulder, we'll call it. There's a little shoulder in here. And from that, I've kind of come off the top of that shoulder. So it looks like the, the, the hair is kind of coming around. And it's given the whole thing a bit of shape. Okay. Ben, you've got, um, Cliff is just asking, you've got some sort of cover around your pen. Um, what is it? Is it homemade? Yeah, it is. That's, um, well, my um, my wife, um, Steph. If we come onto that big camera, yeah, that's great. So this is um, a piece of leather. And I was always, um, you know, because I do a lot of this, I spend a lot of time, um, you know, sometimes these projects could be three, four hours long. Like I said, when we're texturing, it takes time. You've got to build it up. Um, this is just a, a piece of leather and it was like a finger protector. Um, so I've cut the end off and just slipped the, the wire up through the, um, the finger protector. I think it had something to do with sewing, if I'm honest. Um, and yeah, it, it, it adds as a little extra layer some of these pens you'll see with cork on them um it's a it's a little layer um to kind of insulate and protect my <laughs> little fingers um yeah so that's what that is uh just a piece of leather but you could quite easily you know i'm not suggesting that you cut off your fingers of your um leather gloves um but if you've got an old pair or pop down to the charity shop and you know grab a pair of leather um, gloves don't go for the um, imitation leather because we might melt them. But um, certainly a, a real leather, um, it, it's really nice, actually. It's a little soft grip. Um, you can see it um, just sits on there pretty much perfectly. So, um, yeah, that's a homemade thing. Um, but, yeah, if you if you wanted to have a, you know, wanted to do that, um, no problems. So we've got our... Um, We've got our hairs in. We, we've followed the, the, um, the kind of shape of the body. Um, and I've darkened it, like I said. Now, if you're happy as it is, that's great. Um, I would like to put in a couple of little highlights onto that. So I'm going to turn my pyrography pen off. I know there's a little section of the wing here um, to do, but I'll do that another time. That is lots of little lines a bit like the feathering that we're going to do. So you'll see that technique in just a moment. And I'm just going to grab my um, my chisel. I've got a couple here that I like using. Um, this one's very shallow, almost flat, um, but has a very slight curve up on the corners. Um, so it's not if we if we start to um, carve with this, it's not going to leave the kind of tram lines of the edges of the of the um, of the chisel and then this one is like a little micro um quite a deep uh, sweep on it but really thin in section across there so that one could be really good for for highlights and stuff 
Um, so what I'm going to do is just bring the chisel to, and I'm just going to start to bring it across and let it pick up where it wants to pick up. What it's going to do is just knock off any of the kind of high spots that we've got left there and just add some kind of natural highlights. Really, let's not, you know, carve away at the um, at the back. We don't want to, um, you know, take much material off. But we can, if we've got, a, you know, an area that's um, a bit darker, we want to just bring that um, bring that back to a bit of lightness. Um, we can just really gently knock off some of these high spots. And we just start to pick up these little, these little bits. It gives the coat just again that little bit more texture. And if I, you can see that kind of darker area on this back leg. Um, if I kind of whiz across there, you'll see the difference we make quite quickly. All right, so it's bringing that texture out a little bit more. Um, there is, um, if I bring in my template. Um, and we come back up onto that that top down camera, uh, camera four there. Um, there's a bunch of highlights. Let's bring this up close so you can see what we're doing. There is um, a bunch of highlights around the um, the kind of eye and the nose. And also, when I did the whiskers on this one, they did come out very dark. So we can we can, again we can skim across onto that. So we're looking right down at this um, on the whiskers here. And if I just bring that chisel really lightly across the top there, stopping where we get to um, the, the face there. We can bring the definition back in his little, um, little whiskers. Okay. I'm going to swap onto my really fine little gouge here and start to carve back some of this area around the eyes. And we're, we're kind of um, revealing that kind of raw wood underneath where it's really bright. He's got a kind of band of light that goes across the top of his um, or her snout. So I'm just picking up on those little areas. And again, it's just bringing out those high spots we're trying to do. So I'm being very light with this. I'm not bringing the angle up too high to dig into the project. And he's got a little highlight across his ear here. And you could scrape this. Um, sometimes I'll use a little um, kind of razor and scrape back. Um, I find these um, these little flex cut tools really, really useful. Okay, it's another question. Yeah, Fredericks is asking, do you ever use embellishing waxes to enhance? We, I do, yeah. Um, I would do that more on um, a kind of um, like a textured piece. Um, I don't know, Colin, would you be able to pass that little um, box up on top there? Just on the shelf, we've got a little box, and that's where I've used a, a gold... And, um, and a verdigris, thank you. So I use my um, embellishing waxes quite a lot on these uh, kind of more textured pieces. Um, they can work really well on, on these textures. Um, and if you wanted to say you wanted to do this in reverse, so you've got like a white bird or something like that, you could do all this texturing you could put the liming wax on top and all that's going to fill in the texture. You wipe back the, the excess and um, what was, you know, black before or, or the dark browns um, comes out really kind of vivid white that you get from, um, from the liming wax. So um, use liming wax a lot. The verdigris I really like. Um, but yeah, you can do what you want and and you know you could potentially put in a bit of color you could add some browns if you want to make this really kind of natural looking i quite like the um the kind of 
monotonal, uh, the kind of sepia sort of tones you get from from the pyro and the and the natural bands. Okay, so there's our little bat. He's coming on. I have got a little bit more to do with that. Um, I've got this part of the wing to fill out. Um, and potentially a, a couple more highlights. You might put some claws on there or something. Um, but we kind of get the idea of that we want to the um, the um, the fur to follow the shape of the body. And if we've got any kind of areas where we need to, um, you know, go darker or highlight or change the direction, we need to just um, kind of observe those and, and put that information in as we go. Okay. A couple of we're going to have a look at um, a feather now. Um, I just wanted to show you a, a slide before we um, before we get going on the feather. Um, so I do lots of birds. Um, the heron there is, is my favourite. I've done that a few times. Um, but there's a little heron. You can't quite see the textures and stuff on the feathers there, but they are there, and your eye does pick it up when you see the real thing. Um, and if we come in a little bit closer, um, we've got one here that I've added um, a bit of color to. And there's a white and a yellow on, on there. Um, and again, we've got different textures um, through, through the feathers. Um, and I'm going to um, have a go with coloring and, and things like that. In, in next week's, we're going to look at, um, at spirit stains and, um, and paints and things like that. And uh, what sort of finishes will go on top of them. Um, so that's something to look forward to next week. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the techniques we I, I use to, um, to do that bird. Okay. So another question. Yeah, Maria's just asking, um, what do you use to seal the wood afterwards? She uses a lot of uh, wood wax 22. Mm -hmm. Um, so with these textures, I tend to stay away from a wax. I, I go with an oil, um, finish an oil, probably, you know, my favorite. Um, so I use the, the Liberon finishing oil. Um, it's really good stuff. Um, and, and I've just always used it and I find, you know, it's reliable for me. Um, I'm not going to be surprised by any, you know, by any kind of yellowing of the timber or anything like that. Um, I know what it's going to do. Um, sometimes we'll use, um, like a spray lacquer if we've got a lot of, um, loose carbon on, on the surface. Um, so sometimes I'll scorch things quite heavily so they become almost crackled um, with the, with the blowtorch. Um, and that, that um, you know, if you put an oil on top of that, it'll pick up all that loose carbon. So either a sanding sealer, something that's going to kind of go in there and harden it, or um, a spray lacquer over the top, which will give it that protective surface. Um, those, can, those can work really well. So it kind of depends on what your, um, what your project is. Um, but I do tend to stay away from waxes just because the way I work where I cut into the timber, um, if you put a wax over the top of that, the wax um, then fills that, um, that area. All right. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, um, Paul was just asking that he's got a lot of spirit stains, but um, what's the difference between those and embellishing waxes? So a spirit stain is a liquid um, which stains the wood. Um, a embellishing wax um, is usually a wax that's got a, a really high solid content in it. So it could be um, the kind of lime, the, the chalky white. Um, it could be the verdigris with lots of that green color in it. Um, so, and, and different ones have will, will, will be different. Um, you'll get like shiny, glittery blue ones, like electric blue. Um, you know, have a look at the Chromacraft stuff. There's some really nice um, gilt creams and things like that in there. Um, but yeah, they're, they're different things for different um, purposes, really. Um, I use a lot of embellishing waxes and pastes and stuff on, on kind of textured turning. Um, but I find they fill um, the little gaps in the pyrography, um, which you can use to affect. Um, but quite often you'll lose your detail and, and things like that. Okay. So we're on to a feather. Okay. I've got, again, I've got started on this um, just because I didn't want you to, um, you know, have to wait for me to draw this out. Um, I'm going with the same temperature on this one. And with pyrography, when that tip isn't in contact, that's building up heat all the while. 
Okay, um, so when we first touch on, we're going to get a slightly darker burn, which is kind of what we want on this feather. It's going to suggest um, that, you know, where it's um, coming away from this, um, uh, the bit that, that all the, uh, the, the feathers stuck to, the kind of spine of it, if you will. It's probably not the right terminology, but um, that's what we're going to call it. Um, it. It's a bit thicker there where, where we start. Um, and all of these, where we touch on, we get that little kind of flare. And as we bring the tip along, it's going to fade out. So we're getting that kind of natural taper, I guess. And again, I haven't put a hard line along the feather here. I haven't been tempted to put the outline in. We're going to bring each of these little strands along to where my pencil line is and then we can lightly sand off the pencil or we can um, uh, just use a, a pencil eraser they do a great job on um, of taking off little bits of timber and i haven't used my um my carbon paper for this because we've got so many little lines I've not used that carbon paper because I don't want all that wax on the surface. I don't want that to affect the, um, you know, the look of the of the project. So we're doing little parallel lines. They're coming out straight and then they kind of curl off to one side. Well, they do on this feather anyway. I guess every feather would be different. And that's the beauty of doing things like this. Is they don't have to be perfect. In fact, if they are perfect, they do look a bit weird um, because it's natural. It's um, it's a little bit scruffy around the edges. Okay, so you can see how that's working. We just need to build that up. And what actually we're getting is some natural highlights where the grain of the timber's resisting some of the burn here. And we're getting some really nice kind of um, mottling as we, we go through that, um, that hard grain. Um, and again, that's just, uh, that's just gonna lend itself to the, to the feathers on a whole. So you get the idea of that. That's gonna just keep going all the way along the length of the, of the feather. Again, we need to just make sure um, if we've got any little splits in the feather where it's been a bit ruffled or something like that, um, we just need to observe those. So I'm just going to put in a couple up here where we've got that little kind of um, split shape. Again, we want to keep this quite natural looking. I'm doing each of these as an individual stroke. And we can kind of start introducing that little split there. And then we'll just fill that out and give it a bit more kind of body, if you will. But as you can see, fairly time consuming stuff. Um, but I love it. I get in the zone. I get my music on. And it's a lovely way to spend a couple of hours. Uh, very therapeutic. Okay, so another question. Yeah, Philip Barney wants to know, um, are there any pens with a heat adjuster? So it's, for instance, a sliding resistor on the pen's handle? Um, as far as I know, not on the handle. I've seen a couple of the solid point ones where you have it on the lead. Um, as far as I know, not on the handle, but the unit's just here. I can get to it nice and easy and just, you know, um, adjust that if I wanted to. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there's not. Um, but usually get proven wrong on these sorts of things. Um, and lots of people make these homemade. I've seen some really cool ones um, that people have made and they, they go up really hot as well. If they've kind of um, taken the concept and kind of beefed it up. Now, where we've got this, um, the, what I'm going to call the spine, um, we can put that in nice and and hard. The quill. The quill. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
like on the um, like on the lathe. Yeah, that makes sense. It's kind of like the core. A quill, of course, it's like um, like an old pen and ink type thing. Should have thought of that. So I'm putting in the quill there. Thank you, whoever um, whoever put that in, or if it was you, Colin. Good man, <laughs> saved. So I'm going to put a little um, a little burn. So I've done the up on edge that nice sharp burn, and now I'm just laying this down a bit flatter to just put a bit of um, color along the edges and that gives a little suggestion that we're um that we're dealing with a round i can feel i've got a bit of carbon build up so i'm just going to blow on the pen there and i'm just going to scrape that on my bit of abrasive and away we go could also use a wire brush or um i think maria suggested a while back a tea strainer which was a great idea So just bringing my hand around now so I'm a bit more comfortable um, and just bring in a little bit of um, color onto one of these edges. And I'll do that right up that quill, right up the length. And again, it just suggests an, a suggestion of it being um, around where the shadow falls as it as it comes around the corner just blending that in i felt that looked a little bit um dark up on the edge okay so we've got some little fluffy fibers there as well that is going to really lend um you know a bit of reality or a bit of realism i should say to the um to the feather um, so I'm just changing pens. Okay, I've pulled out my my other pen. Rather than change tips, I'm a bit lazy and a bit. <laughs> sometimes when we get that small, um, it shows off my hand shaking. So um, I've just stopped and I'm using um, a round wire type. Okay, and what I'm going to do is actually use my little um, jeweler's pliers just to crimp that in. These are great, these little tools, they're sprung. And I've just brought that shape in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the temperature down. I've got that th fairly thick wire, but we can do some really nice kind of subtle burns with this. Always good to, um, you know, bring that temperature down if you're not quite sure how it's going to work um, when you first touch on. And I've given myself a little burn there, which I'm not too pleased with. But we can really bring in these kind of um, uh, sort of fluffier type hairs using something like this. And I'm going over my pencil marks um, that I drew on here. But we want these to kind of be all fluffy and not as sharp as um, what we've got. And when they're sat next to each other, you really get that, um, that nice little contrast. So we're not actually burning this dark. This is, um, you know, kind of, um, it, this will become more apparent when we, when we put an oil on top. Because what this does is it kind of seals um, the timber a little bit. And actually, I've got another uh, another slide I'd like to show you um, of, of something uh, which shows this example quite well. Um, so that's a, a scarab beetle. And on the back of that one, we didn't want it fluffy or, um, you know, hairy. It wants that kind of shiny look and almost like ribbed down the, um, the back of his um, little wing protectors or 
whatever that's called. I should study anatomy a bit before I do these things. Um, but you can see um, what we've done is not burnt really dark, um, but some nice gentle burns has kind of um, sealed the surface and then given it that reflective look. Um, so when the light hits it, um, the light bounces back and it gives it that kind of beetle um, shiny look. Whereas, you know, the light hitting a texture like this um, on the feathers, on the fur, because they're going in lots of different directions and, and stuff, it kind of dissipates the light. So it's kind of sucking the light in a little bit. Um, so you get lots of different um, different effects, but definitely, um, you know, try, try different things. Um, and like I say, this is darker than I, it, it, um, it looks quite dark on camera, but um, to the kind of naked eye, it's not too, not too bad. Let's get the pencil eraser in there, and there's no reason why you can't use a pencil eraser on a piece of timber. Watch out for, you know, the kind of greasy ones. We don't want any of that kind of grease. And if you have gone heavy with the texturing, quite often this white stuff will kind of lay in there and you'd have to pick it out with a toothpick or, or something similar. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, will the finishing oil stop the pyro from fading, which it normally does in sunlight? So if you want that UV protection, um, they, you need to look at the oil, what it says on the tin. I don't think the, um, the finishing oil will have any kind of UV protection in it. Um, but there's certainly some of the Osmo oils, if you're doing outside signs um, and things like that, that will protect it from the UV. But I wouldn't leave these, you know, in full sunlight because it will um, bleach it like, like it, the sun will bleach anything um, without any kind of UV protection on it. Um, so, no, it won't stop it from fading in the sunlight, but, um, you know, it, it'll be fine for um, quite some time. Um, impartial sunlight as long as it's not in the full glare of the um of the sun all day um it'll be all right okay so i'm going to finish this feather um another time you know you get the idea of where we're going with that we're going to keep on burning those lines in um you can scale this up um, to, to bigger, um, you know, lots of people do animal portraits and things like that, something I shy away from. Um, but you can scale, so where we were talking about the bat and we have those kind of clumps of hair and they're tapering into one another, um, you can scale that up. You can um, bring in the highlights through carving. Um, but it's a slow, it is a slow process and worth taking your time with. Don't rush them because um, you'll end up with this uh, kind of... Uh, patchy look to to the to the fur and the feathers okay so another question yeah just before we we go um jim was just asking he said um, how do you how are you getting the light um in the middle of every stroke on the face of the feathers so if i come back so along here hmm. we're talking about hmm. so that actually is um it's, it's in the timber OK, so this is um, I don't know if we can see, but if I follow this line in the timber on the line of the grain, it runs through here. It comes back down here. All right. And that will give us a really nice. Um, it, it gives it that kind of mottled look where we've got that um, yearly growth ring. It's kind of throwing the tip back out at me. I can feel it. The change in resistance as I come over this um, this line. So that's not my skill, I'm afraid. That is, um, that's a, a property of the timber. Okay. And the same, we've got like little eyes and things in here. Sometimes, you know, the, the piece of wood will really enhance the pro project. Okay. So it's choosing the right timber, um, making sure. Um, and, and quite often these things happen by mistake. So that's a, a lucky mistake. But we will get a definite, um, uh, slowing or a tapering of the of the kind of color all right it should start off dark where we touch on and kind of um as the piece of timber leaches the heat or um you know conducts the heat out of the tip it will kind of fade as we go 
All right, and another question. Yeah, another one. This one from Woodward Learning. What would you suggest to remove the smoke given off? Smoke given off. So um, up on the um, the shelf here, I've got an AC15 AFS. So that's um, a craft um, air filter with a charcoal um, filters fit in it. Um, that will take away all the smoke and it will filter and it will pump all the clean air out the back. Um, obviously, um, quite a, you know, it's a, it's a fair sized unit, um, but I bring that in close onto the table. Um, otherwise, a window open, have a fan blowing away from the project so it's not cooling the tip down. Um, and what that'll do is just draw the smoke and kind of push it towards the window. Um, a well ventilated room but actually you know we're not producing lots of smoke in here we could just about smell it in the air but it's um it's a nice smell i kind of liken it to having an, an open fire um you get that sort of gentle you know um nice smell of smoke but it's not um it's not full on okay so thank you for joining us today come back next week we're going to be starting to add color to some of these projects um, we're going to look at um, spirit stains, at paints, um, and things like that. Okay, so we'll see you next week uh, for more woodworking wisdom.